All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of Downright Annoyed with Movies. I am uh, one of your hosts for today's show. Uh, I am Michael Carls. I'm one of the hosts of the Downright Nerdy podcast. Um, and alongside us this uh, journey, uh, we are going to have a whole bunch of podcasters here. Um, this whole uh, uh, thing is uh, uh, started, uh, this is I think our 10th week doing this. It's been a ton of fun so far. Every week we choose a different movie. Um and uh, before I get a little too grainy and start moving around, I'm just going to start going around the horn and have everybody introduce themselves. So uh, let's go with my co-host here and uh, founder of uh, co-founder of this, Jackson. Hi there, uh, Michael. You look fine so far. So that's one thing to note. I believe it's our ninth episode, by the way. Uh, okay. The tenth one's going to be a special one, though, because we have plans to, you know, pick from our two genres that we selected. But um, I'm Jackson Borden Annoyed. Uh, you can find us at BordenAnnoyed.com, weekly uh, movie podcast. Um, we have been hosted it live on YouTube the last couple weeks, and we'll probably continue to do that as long as this whole uh, quarantine thing is over. I don't know if my my co-host just doesn't trust that I don't have the corona, I guess, or something. But <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, last week we talked about, uh, what was it, uh, villains and which one you wish would have won. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go check that out. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Awesome. That was a great episode, by the way. All right. And uh, next, the uh, <laughs> the guy who chose the movie, uh, <laughs> Paul, thank you for joining hey. us again. And thank yeah. you for this 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 uh, honor. Choice. <laughs> you're, you're so welcome. Uh, my name is Paul from... Uh, podcast tales from the flip side with the cbsi brand and yes michael's absolutely right after weeks of anticipation the wheel finally landed on me but uh did it also land a disappointment <laughs> stay tuned to find out <laughs> <laughs> sounds good all right and uh one of the proponents and uh, and uh defenders of this movie we will have ryan Sweet. Hey guys, I'm Ryan from the Fake Nerd Podcast. We're a weekly pop culture podcast. Uh, take that, Corona! You can't stop us. We got we got technology. Uh, last week we, re we reviewed a Quiet Place Part Two. We reviewed a Quiet Place Part Two. That movie didn't come out. How did we review it? Find out on last week's episode. We're also going to review Mulan and New Mutants, uh, Black Widow. Every movie that's coming out, we're still reviewing it. How? You're just gonna have to watch and listen. Uh, we're on every podcast service that you listen to. Uh, we're also on YouTube because of the quarantine. We're doing a lot more YouTube stuff. Uh, so check it out. Thanks. Bye. Awesome. Cool. And then now, uh, somebody who did not like the movie as much. Spoiler alert. Not at all. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> I'm Ken from Pinkies Out Podcast, and eventually we'll get more content out. But um, yeah, you can find us on all your different podcasting platforms. In fact, I'm so geared up to to smash on this movie i can't think straight right now so <laughs> check us awesome. out cool sounds good and last but not least the man from florida congratulations again on the new house buddy thank you sir thank you man uh, i'm cooking from just a little podcast uh i've been ai mia quite a bit because i've been trying to get this adulting thing going on and hopefully now once everything kind of settles and we close in this house we'll be ready to rock and roll and put out some more content for you guys so thank you great all right, that's our panel. All right, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little something a little bit new. I got thirty second. I got a thirty second clock right here. Uh, everybody, thirty seconds or less. I'm going to go uh, from person to person. You get thirty seconds to to talk and say uh, your initial thoughts on the movie. Okay. Oh, we're starting with Paul. Okay, Paul, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, Enduring Love. I think it's a, a psychological drama. Um, I, I just enjoyed it. I, I found it in the library. I used to just flip through and pick random movies. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I, don't, I just like it. I think it's a, a nice mind, a mind game uh, movie. About this guy trying to deal with some post-traumatic stress on top of a little extra uh, stress tailing behind him. Pun intended. Uh, so, uh, right. I liked it. Cool. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go with, uh, hey, Ken, you got 30 seconds on the clock. All right. I hated this movie. I absolutely hated this movie. It was so boring uh, for such fine actors. I, it's like Craig, uh, what's his name? Uh, Daniel Craig. James, but Daniel Craig. I think he got tricked into making this movie. It's like he just walked through the set one day and they wouldn't let him out. So then he had to finish the movie. Uh, I thought it was a watered down fatal attraction. Uh, just the the protagonist was just unsympathetic at all. Okay. I, all right. I, I wanted to ask at what point 
do you got if you can answer this maybe within or without your 30 seconds at what point did you start to not like the movie was something i i wanted to ask okay well uh, we'll, we'll we'll get it we'll get into that yeah, i yeah. want to get uh, 30 seconds in ryan yep cool yeah i uh i actually like this movie uh the more i think about it the more i do like it i think it is a really interesting drama and the way that people deal with ptsd and trauma and how that brings people together but not in ways that the other person might reciprocate. I think that is a very fascinating look on relationships and people and the way they deal with something really insane, like what happens in this movie, like people dealing with death in such certain ways. Also, stalkers are crazy. And uh, the end of this movie messed me up like a lot. I didn't expect it. I think it's, I think it's good. Okay. Uh, Cookie. I still don't even know what to think about this movie. Like halfway into it, you're still trying to figure out, okay, what's this movie about? And I took Paul's advice. I didn't go and actually watch the trailer to it. Um, and I feel like if I did, I probably would not have watched this film because God, it's a tough watch. It's tough to understand, tough to grasp what's going on because there's not really a plot to it. You're just trying to figure out what's actually happening with the protagonist, antagonist, who's who, uh, where the love triangle is happening. So go watch it for yourself and find out. All right, and uh, Jackson, uh, I uh, kind of loved this movie. Uh, oh you didn't my start God. The so I'll take <laughs> yeah. the extra time. I uh, I can't say that I had like a blast watching it the whole time, but I do love the way it dealt with like insecurities that we all have in relationships and the whole concept of like is love just a biological chemical thing that's happening and does it matter? Um, I thought all the performances were good, especially from the uh, usually comedic. Uh, the the gay stalker character. I thought he was great. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Especially the beginning and the end are both batshit crazy awesome. So cool. Thank you guys um, for selling it better than I could. <laughs> all right, uh, me thirty seconds or less. Uh, yeah, I, I I was not a fan of it. Uh, I um, while I did appreciate the uh, messages that and um, and uh, themes that they were trying to they're trying to grasp uh i think it, it fell flat in some areas uh, i don't know maybe it's, it could just be uh my personal uh uh experiences that may have influenced uh, these at times but uh yeah overall i was a little uh, less than impressed 30 seconds stuff Okay, cool. So uh, now we kind of get now we can get into the nitty gritty and start arguing. Do we normally <laughs> Jackson, don't you do like the log line of what the movie's about? Uh, so I mean IMBD summary. There we go. Hard for Paul. Simple, it's simply Paul, two, go for it. two, It's just simply two strangers become dangerously close <laughs> after witnessing a deadly accident, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong, but not no. really. Jed is Can basically I... the homeless guy walking down the road that yeah. just happens upon this. He's like, hey, buddy, you want to <laughs> kneel and pray with me? <laughs> Come on. That was yeah, just, but he's, that not was right, he's not right in the head, right? And uh, I, I, so I got to say. what's walking around the country then? I mean, it's just. No, well, that's I, a, nobody knows. It, could it be his dog? I, it, it could not be. Like, he's a crazy guy. Or was guy. he in the trunk of the doctor's car? I mean. <gasps> Well, hold on. Can I can I just can yes, I start sir. by saying that if you want to get someone hooked on a movie, I think you start it like this one started. I yes. mean, right away I had like a gasp moment. Yeah. Um and it's difficult. It's difficult to like get me to care that much about what's happening when I don't even know the characters yet. You know? So so for them to have that beginning scene, I thought was fantastic. Um I did I did kind of enjoy it partially because it was something a little different. It was funny. I uh, It had like a quirkiness to it. It almost felt like, and it was probably because there were a couple actors from Love actually in it, but I was watching <laughs> yeah. it thinking, did the same guy make this? Because it's weird. It's got a strange soundtrack. Like some of the music that's playing in the background doesn't feel like it fits. Um, but uh, yeah, I also, I like, there's just little stuff in this. Like I love the idea that, he's so insecure and upset because she doesn't want to sculpt his face. Yes. Um, that's the kind of stuff that like spoke to me personally. I can imagine how that would feel, you know? And meanwhile, he's dealing with all this PTSD of, you know, had I have just hung on, would we have been able to save this guy and yada, yada, yada. Uh, you know, the, the, the wife of the guy who died wondering, 
you know, if, if he was uh, off, you know, having some sort of a, uh, an affair and how that would kind of eat at your, your soul. So I, uh, there were a lot of things I really liked about this. Is uh, it I, great? Probably not. I want to piggyback off right, that real quick. Ryan, right, 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 right before you piggyback off this, I just realized, Hey, we didn't acknowledge the chat and we got solo Wookiee, one of our biggest fans. He's always in here. I love oh, you. Thank solo you. Wookie. Uh, this movie is crazy. Just starting with that statement. Uh, the worst and best part of the movie. I still don't know if I liked it or not. Uh, Cookie, you're in here too. Uh, first question: <laughs> if You guys watch uh, five minutes of credits. Uh, there's an end clip after five minutes of credits. If did you guys watch the before. Marvel credit scene? I did oh, not. I, think no, I, did. I did not. I did not I think watch I did. it. Yeah. I Jed is alive and he's in a mental hospital. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, is he, he going to play safe place? <laughs> yeah, Ryan, you're up. <laughs> All right. So um, everything Jackson said, I agree with. Um. I don't think this is a movie. I will. I will agree that there isn't a huge plot to it because it's. It's not about that. It's about the people. It's a slice of life. But it's a couple weeks after this ter terrific uh, event, uh, and just the little moments that you're talking about, Jackson. That's what I love about this movie. It's the little moments between certain characters. It's not the overall thing, but overall, I did enjoy it. I think the. I think that the little moments between um, um, Daniel Craig and his wife, and Jed and Daniel Craig, and like when you meet when you meet his girl. Um, uh, Emily Mortimer, his his uh, girlfriend's brother, and like the attacks that Daniel Craig has against him, and how you see Daniel Craig slowly like going crazy, not knowing if he believes like he's not he, exactly insecurity. That's the big thing that I that I thought this movie did really well is like, do you trust that you believe you did the right thing? And if someone keeps confronting you about it, like that's like almost like gaslighting. And like I just thought the drama in this movie was so strong uh, that it superseded all like the other stuff that didn't bother me. Did you guys okay. have a feeling of like at the beginning towards it, like a beautiful mind almost if this guy is actually really there or was yes. it like right off the bat, you knew that he was automatically a physical person. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was that kind of I was of hoping movie. it was all in his head to be honest. <laughs> Same here. It would have made it a better movie. I agree. Ken, Ken, Ken I, I want you, I want you to uh, expand Oops, on that because I, I had the uh, similar feelings. Well, I, I think it would have made a better movie if he'd actually been a figment of his imagination, like in the beautiful mind, because then it truly would have been like, holy crap, that was just him going crazy, and he just stabbed his girlfriend. You know, then I would have really, you know, bought into the whole PTSD and all that that stuff. I just, it just didn't seem genuine to me. I just this movie was, is. I feel this movie is very realistic. I think I think him it being all in his mind and he kills his girlfriend. That is so. That is such a like horror, like crazy. Uh, psychological thriller. This is not that. This is a very realistic approach of like, this guy is really damaged. Jed is really damaged. And he thought he had this truly real connection. I'm like, uh, like, uh, not like, like a, a girlfriend, but like when, whenever you meet someone in real life and you just have a real connection, like, a, like, oh my God, like there's just something between us. And like, we've all had, we've all felt that. Like, I, at least I, I hope we've all felt that in some way, whether it's just a friend or a spouse. Um, Jed truly believes that. And I, and I always felt in my heart, like this guy is so damaged he really thought he met like his soulmate and Daniel Craig does not feel the same way. And it's just a slippery slope of, um, of murder. Like that's honestly, that's what actually would happen. The stalker would kill the person who gets in the way of his love. Like this was a really realistic take on uh, a batshit insane idea. I, uh, I would like to say that had that have been the ending, Ken, I think it would have completely undercut the movie. Um, yeah. I, that, that's my opinion. Now, I would like to say that I now feel the way Jed does about Paul because he <laughs> he suggested this. Um, and this is one where yeah. props to Paul, whether you liked it or not, you probably never would have seen this yeah. had he not have suggested it. So yeah. and more like this for it. Please. Yeah, but <laughs> okay, see, we uh, real quick. Real, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jackson. No, well, I was just going to say, like, yeah, I see a lot better movies than this overall, but, like, you know, uh, uh, sometimes I'd rather watch a quirky, weird movie that kind of makes me think and makes me feel uncomfortable than watch something that's great that I've seen a hundred times already, you know? So, right. And uh, that's going to bring me back to Paul. Paul, uh, what was your, like, overall reasoning as to why you chose this? Well, I was going to say real quick, is in the long lines of the, uh, um, Jed not being real. Um, I could totally follow that storyline until he's at lunch with um, the TV producer, Andrew Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, when their lunch scene is when he's like, oh, okay, this is a real person. So there, yeah, I don't know. That's when I, I yeah. just because we were on this movie review thing, I was like, what's a random movie that yeah. I haven't seen in a long time that these guys might uh, be interested in. And then the whole backstory of my own, where I, found it in the library watched it once it was like 
just a psychological crazy movie. I bought the DVD, lent it to a friend who never gave it back to me, and then <laughs> and then I bought the DVD again, which I'm sure I'm sure you guys are uh, yeah. very. Did that friend ever talk to you again? <laughs> <laughs> he probably burned it. Yeah. <laughs> so it, so I know it's just a, a random movie I pulled just out of the blue from the library based on the cover as and read the back. Let's go for it and. Thanks, Jackson. One. I was actually just about to go to the chat. Yeah, Solo Wookie. Uh, most artists won't do their art from. Uh, art form from their loved ones because personal connections make the art comes out badly. Uh, they put too much personal in the art, uh, makes it unrecognizable uh, to, uh, to the lament. Um, that, that scene where where his girlfriend finally makes a, a a thing of him, realizing that she's done with him, and like yeah. just yeah. the look in their eyes, they don't even have to say that much. Like I I disagree with Daniel Craig like phoning it in. I think he does a really good job because he's trying to hide his emotions most of the time because it is a he doesn't want to seem like he's going nuts, and it's why. Like when he asked his girlfriend, like halfway through, he's like, "Did I let you down?" That hurt me so bad because he 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 tried to save someone. He shouldn't be going through this, but this dude is putting the pressure on him to make him feel a certain way. And I'm just like, I I, I felt all the emotions that they wanted me to feel personally. Do uh, Ryan, do you feel that Claire really even supported him that much? I feel yeah. like she kind of left him hanging. She uh, after a while she did. After a while, yes. But after again, after a while, like you have to support yourself. You can't you can't right. be with someone toxic. That, that poses to another them. question. How long do you give somebody to get to get over this uh this type of uh traumatic experience? Like she's she did try to be there for him. She recommended um psychiatric help, which he took almost offense to, uh, mm -hmm. when he he visited her work at the meat packing company or whatever. And uh I mean, how much time is enough time? Do you does 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 love uh endure does, endure <laughs> right, does, uh, no exactly right like yeah I, uh, there's not a I, real answer i would i would say until you can't and i think she hit her breaking point and couldn't anymore i mean i'll tell you what uh you guys are, are saying like oh one of the things was you thought jed might not be real my entire thing was what if wh what is daniel craig's character's name joe what if joe actually does love jed that's where I thought the movie was going to go. I thought it was going to go. He actually did fall for this guy and he's trying to hide his emotions so hard because he's got a girlfriend. He's had his entire life. He can't throw it away for some dude. Right. I and thought, I thought close, it was going sorry. in that direction. Ryan, I just want to say shout out to solo Wookiee who has no heart. Okay. <laughs> 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 right. uh, I agree with solo Wookiee. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, real he, quick. I, I, I have my long lost really, brother. Yeah. I haven't really uh, said my, my piece too much. Uh, uh, while I do, appreciate all the all the uh different messages that it was trying to give and ryan i do agree with you that this is not a movie that that uh deals with plot it, it deals with emotion and and uh and uh the the little the, the small little things it was just if if you're going to uh make a movie about something there has to be uh, at least for me a little bit more because it was just way too slow for me to keep getting into it. Um, if, if it just had maybe one plot point, maybe a little bit more of a backstory, uh, or maybe not a backstory, but just another <laughs> plot line with, uh, another one of those individuals that, fe that, that, ju that, uh, let go off the, uh, the, the balloon, it may have saved the movie a little bit more for me, but, um, it was just too much, uh, too slow. It was too slow for me to, appreciate all the all the acting and or not all the acting but all the uh, messages that the actors are trying to portray if does that make sense i don't know yeah. if I'm no really... it does yeah it doesn't that hour too long doesn't that kind of like doesn't the slow burn nature of it though make the end that much more impactful because no, i, I love like it was gonna if, try if to the kill end, the girlfriend if the end of the movie was this movie for me it could have ended 20 minutes prior to the actual ending it, it got drawn out for me too much I understand where you're coming from, how, how some, how it can do that. Um, I don't know. I, 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 like I said, I feel like my personal bias is getting in the way of me, uh, giving a, a, uh, like a fair, uh, reaction, I guess, to this, to this film. Just, and then I don't like expect no. you to love every movie that we talk about. No, no. Okay. So I, honestly, I, I mean, think I know what Mike is getting at. Um, some of us, our jobs are to, handle stressful situations and and take the bull by the horn so it's very hard for us to understand the falling apart of someone in the situation i know i over the years i i react like i react very well to high stress situations so 
it's like to see a, a man's man fall apart. I'm like, I just, I couldn't buy it. I just, he didn't James know. Bond I, fell I apart pretty good. Time. I think at that is definitely time, as, as a rebuttal, though, real quick to Ken, even though I, I understand where he's trying to come from. Uh, we have both also uh, seen the adverse effects of, of people who can't uh, deal oh, with yeah. stress, right? Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, I mean, Liz. I, I, I want to say something real quick. I don't. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, um, and uh, I, I promise you, Ken, this is not an attack on you, but I don't know other way to say it. Like, I don't think I don't think it's fair that you handle stress better than anyone. Like, if you handle stress better than other people, that doesn't mean that they the movie would be bad because they don't handle it the way you did. You know, like just because you can't relate, no, I'm saying you can't I'm relate to them the being filter. Sad. Yeah, say I'm that again? saying my filter. I can't. I'm saying no, because I of my think filter Ryan, what that. he's saying is that his particular filter is hard for him to make that he understands that other people uh, handle stress right. differently. It's just yeah. for him seeing it. It just it's just different for him in his mind. And I think that's also the same with me as well. That's fair. So, yeah, I've got a question for Ken. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yes. Ken, were, were you upset when James Bond lost it at the end of Casino Royale and started crying and shit and had a miserable time? <sighs> I don't remember Casino Royale, honestly. Just oh, saying, he's a man's that? man, James Bond, <laughs> Daniel Craig, man. The dude's a professor, and he's talking about love. A man's man is not what this dude but is. There's, Come on. <laughs> there's a well, different, though. It's a different character, though. He's, I mean, he's yeah, but no, I'm just, about love. I'm just saying, though, he's yeah. trying to, he's trying to battle with his own internal feelings on emotions himself. I mean, he's coming, he's been, you know, as a professor, he's trying to look at anything from like a logical, analytical perspective, and he has to face this, this trauma that he doesn't know how to cope with because he can't tackle it that way. You know? So he's trying to use logistics to uh to explain emotion, right? Right. Yes. Yeah, which, that's which, I mean that, which yeah, but the end of and I and I and I appreciate that uh that attempt uh or that not that not that attempt, but I appreciate the uh um the effort that is that is uh that is uh being portrayed is I don't know for some reason it's just uh, it, it just I, I, I can't yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've I've seen too many uh, people with PTSD. I've seen too many people that have um, had uh, extreme PTSD attacks in 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 the worst form of uh, of of way possible. <laughs> and uh, it was just very. Uh, I, I I somebody else talk right now. I'm well, trying to I, I was gather just my words. Say- he might have been able to deal with like the PTSD aspect of it, but he had the extra yeah. layer of this lunatic that was following him around and standing out. You know what I'm saying? Like he would have been just fine if Jed never interfered. Yep. Well, Absolutely. that brings me to my point. Do you guys think that this was a take on Stephen King's misery? In that sense, where you I think had it was more that fatal attraction. Okay. It's- it's, I would say it's neither. It's because like they never go to either extreme in those. This is just a a tale of a really sad dude trying to go through something that another person's going through. Like I don't think like Fatal Attraction. Like she's roasting bunnies and like it turns into like an action movie at the end. Like like murder. Like I think this was a really like grounded approach on the situation. Like I, I, anything. Jed, here, Jed would have got you. there, but he caught him. I mean. He found him at his apartment and found his little shrine. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I think Jed would have got there too. Yeah, but I mean, did, he was already did starting he, to cut the eyes out of her photos. But did he have an obsession with Daniel Craig's character before this happened? We don't know. That's what I, I like about it. Right. So know. I don't. So I don't think you can compare it to Misery. He had a shrine, which means he could have had it for before. He could have had it before this. Yeah, I suppose. I I kind of doubt it. I think that he got obsessed with them because he thought there was this electric connection between yes. the two. You know. See, I thought he was following the doctor. Is what I thought. Yeah, I thought, I thought he was obsessed yeah. with the doctor, well, and it was transference. I thought the doctor. Been. I thought the doctor was a psych doctor too. Before the more more the story was revealed, like, oh, this was he That's wasn't a car with somebody. It was his patient. That, could, that could be it. That's that could definitely too. be it. And then and then this patient goes, you know, goes missing uh, after this accident, or or just I don't know. The care isn't followed up with, but um. Uh, I did notice uh, uh, the IMBD, the grandfather, was a Star Wars extra. So maybe that maybe that brings it back for you a little bit. <laughs> if it hey, was a text, uh, that'd be awesome. Did you guys see the uh, – I mean, obviously we saw Andrew Lincoln, but did you guys see the other Walking Dead uh, uh, star there? Good. 
No, because I stopped watching in season oh. seven. So, I do know that the voice eight. of Paddington is in this movie, though. So, so uh, Joe's wife, the one who uh, you know, Emily Mortimer, the, only gets uh, twelve. She she plays Alpha in um, in Walking Dead. Oh, does she? She is, does, yeah. Oh. And she does actually. To be quite, I mean, uh, I think I was telling you guys about uh, my like. I thought I I would never like Walking Dead after Andrew Lincoln left. It got way better afterwards. And when uh, oh, Alpha came, she's great. Yeah, she's really. I good. just can't believe that. I have to get back into it. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, didn't it, Michonne... she, I didn't think it would be oh. either. And I'm like, didn't Michonne just oh. leave too? Who? And Michonne, Michonne with the Michonne. I Michonne. Think so yeah, I haven't watched any of this past. I think season, the last I episode. Didn't want, I didn't want to get AMC. I mean, I, I I think it's the to... same. I think it's the same world again, where you know, Claire, all... Claire, and the only TV hope producer they get go to America. Zombies. And, and and the zombie outbreak happens. We have the dad from Shaun of the Dead in this. And I, it's Nine. a new universe, the Enduring Love universe. <laughs> and then they chain him up in the shed and play video games. I um, want to talk about a scene that I really to, like to, um, real quick. Can I answer uh, Jackson's? Oh, yeah, oh, go, go for ahead. it. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, okay. Who am I going to? It, it took me a few minutes. Me. Um, you had mentioned the Casino Royale and him crying at the end. That's a different kind of – that was more of a rage cry. Because, uh, you know, he was so angry and frustrated. You know, I, I can sympathize with that because I've been there. And it goes back to my own filter, I know. But um, that's why I, I liked, you know, it didn't bother me that James Bond cried, I guess. Let's put it that way. So, <laughs> it wasn't a it rage wasn't a, cry. His, his it woman was that he loved died. What are you talking about? And he was pissed because he couldn't save her. It wasn't a rage cry. <laughs> yes, it was. Stop it. Listen, I think if it you're was. crying... Then it doesn't matter how you start a crying, you're crying. Right. Yep. You're crying. <laughs> it doesn't no. matter. That's true. It's a good uh, point. Okay, so Ryan. Quick. Uh, Ryan, way I, to be the sensitive. Never held one. back the urge I am 100 percent the most somebody so hard am, to cry. I am so sensitive, guys. Oh my god. We I'm still in charge of my emotions. Ryan, you and I cried with the last one yeah. that we had. So dude, it's Tuesday, fine. Tuesday with Maury, hell yeah. There's like I wrong. I have dude, my parents, like I've had parents pass away. I've, I have grandparents pass away. I'm the most sensitive person on the planet. So it's easy for me to connect. <laughs> With this kind of shit, because I am, I got death all over my body. If I'm being honest, you know what I mean. Like, so it's easy for me to connect with this stuff. <clears throat> there was, um, there was one kind of force. I don't know if it, you can count it as foreshadowing, but I, I, I had to skim through the movie again to find it. But it's about within the first 17 minutes when, when Joe gets the initial call from Jed, like, "Hey, it's me, mate. Let's meet up or whatever." He's in his apartment playing those balloons. If I can share my screen, I took a screen capture of it. And this, like, watching the movie again freaked me out. Uh, it just, I don't know, caught my eye. Um, I don't know if it's, it's, so there's this weird face. Yeah, I there. remember that. Did oh, you guys yeah. see that? I was like, that, I don't know, that, that, I didn't remember that, that part. Is that Jed? Yeah, I think it's his wife. Oh, okay. I think it's mm. uh, I think it's Claire. a reference to the Watchers from Doctor Who. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that, that Does, kind of freaked me out. Did it bother anyone else that he didn't call the authorities on this yeah. guy? Yes. yes. Yeah. Af after, to an extent, yes. After after it started getting crazy, I'm like, all right, dude, need to call the authorities. Uh, right. The first couple instances, like, I get it. Like, if he's a fan, if he's got like some mental instability, like, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin that. But after like the third or fourth meeting where things get intense, maybe call the cops. <laughs> yeah. So what, okay, I want to talk about one scene that I really like real quick. Oh yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Real quick. So I moved to California because I want to be a film student, or a film major, right? I don't do that anymore. I want to do comic stuff. It's different. But I really appreciate really good filmmaking. And I think one of the best scenes in this movie is when they're eating dinner together. Uh, it's after they kind of are, a bunch of shit happens, and she cooks a meal for him, and he seems to be in a really good place. He seems to be happy. And uh, she's like, oh, I got, you know, like, like chili sauce and soy sauce, and they're having a wonderful dinner. And it's slowly, like, they're happy, and then he slowly just starts going down until it's silent for like an entire minute. And all you hear is the crunching of the food. And I hate crunching. I hate uh, much like talking oh, in you movies. And you should have seen Riley's face. She yeah. was like, what the hell is oh. going on? Yes, I hate nasty, crunching and you know. I hate people eating food, but it's to that is that is the purpose of the scene because nobody's talking. It's to show how silent it is and how annoying the, the crunching is and how this was supposed to be a great meal and it's ruined. Uh, by nobody even talking. I just think as, right? as a filmmaker, I think that is a, a really excellent scene of uh, showing character growth and character uh, like regression, but not even saying anything. There's people eating dinner. And I, I really like that scene a lot. I, I apologize to your spouses, gentlemen. 
Um, I know. Actually, actually, you know what's funny, Ryan? Hates that. Ryan, um, I will agree with you that I think that was probably the best scene in the movie, to be quite honest, because I feel like that was, uh, I mean, being able to see somebody who has a a, um, a mental uh, disorder or anything like that, uh, they go from uh, sugar to shit real quick real quick and it doesn't yeah. take much at all it could just it could take nothing at all you know what i'm saying um th- i think that was probably the best part of the movie for me mm-hmm. um but uh how about this uh around the horn i'll give everybody 30 seconds again what are your favorite parts of what's your what was your favorite scene of the movie me and ryan i think ryan was that your favorite scene um it's a tie movie? between another okay scene. Then, then, don't, then don't tell me we'll, we'll uh go with uh paul first so uh, there you go. I just want to use my, I just want an excuse to use this here. Go ahead. <laughs> I guess no. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Here, I'll do this. Oh, there it goes. Um, I, I think, um, I, maybe when he, when he, when he I, actually, to be honest, the most interesting part to me is when he's talking about how he's interested in the curtains, like, thanks for those secret signals and the actual real history oh. behind that part that he looks up. And uh, I just thought that was, I don't know, interesting part of the movie that they threw in there that he's, signaling him without even trying like he did from the beginning okay solo um, he has a has a good uh, thing oh, where on the on the chatty chat uh up above actually he has two yeah he had an obsession he had an obsession before and he proclaims that the previous love for him for a time was a bookstore when he tried to get his autograph in the professor's book and confesses his long time love because he, he asked for his autograph and things like i've been a fan of yours for a long time okay all right so was he stalking him at the picnic uh, or, or again, was he like with the doctor? Like, I don't think you need the answer. I don't think that's what's important to no. the movie. Honestly, I think it's a cool idea though. Okay. Uh, Jackson favorite scene. Uh, I mean, I just have to say that the first scene and the last, just the beginning and end, mm-hmm. I guess, cause they're both sh- really shocking, visceral things in the middle of a movie. That's kind of more slow and, you know, it, it, uh, the, the beginning, I mean, I sent Paul a message privately on Instagram immediately like, ooh, that's a good way to start a movie. I was like jacked up. So I would say that first scene was the best. Okay. Um, Cookie, we'll go with you next. Uh, cinematography, I think, was really great, especially the running scene when he's running back after he realizes Jed is at his house and he's like, oh crap, I got to get home. Um, yeah, exactly. And then and panning through everything, how you're looking through the actual shelving, I thought that was very, very great how they did that. Um, I, I, I enjoyed those scenes because those scenes kind of brought the movie together, gave it that suspenseful feel. Um, overall, I, I mean, that's about it. That, the beginning, the ending, I think are great. The credits, oh my God, those credit rolls were fantastic. Other than that, yeah, that's about it for me. Cool. Um, Ken. Oof. Um, you gotta like something. I, yeah, I gotta say, <laughs> I did like the ending, like the last five minutes where. Uh, the professor comes in and him and his like 12 year old girlfriend confessed it. it's there. It was her scarf and their picnic in the car. And the wife realizes that her, her husband that she had thought was a good man, but thought was a bastard for cheating on her was actually a really good man and was actually trying to save the kid. I, I like that. And I like the scene where Daniel Craig was walking with the girl, you know, kind of explained to her about her dad. I, I did like that. You know, um, cool. uh, Ryan, what I, did, was I thought other- those were good scenes. Cool. What, Ryan, what was that other scene you you wanted? So um, it's the scene where they're um they're all having dinner and um the brother brings his Polish girlfriend and Daniel Craig is like, are you ever gonna stop thinking with your dick and how like love is just this theory and like I was gonna propose to you and then she's like, well what changed? Like did you change your mind? And he doesn't say anything and that is so that is so heartbreaking and I think um that that actress does such a good job of like trying to keep it together next to her entire family when she just realized that the love of her life turned is is saying no to her and i think um that's a really powerful acting scene cool i also um, really, i think i think yeah. when the dude's falling and it's just just it's just him falling i'm like man that look that is horrifying it's it is. Yeah. and every every I mean, once in a while up. yeah you're really breaking the 30 second rule here I, 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 sorry yeah. every you once in a while they'll show a scene of him burpees. falling I'm about to. He has I'm to about, do burpees now. Yeah, I'm about to mute him while he does. <laughs> Make burpees. him do burpees. Um, okay. So uh, overall grade, how about that? Uh, let's start with Paul since he chose it. I, I think it's a a solid good B movie. I, I don't. I'm not going to put it higher than that. I think it's a good B movie. 
Um, and then I, uh, if you want to come back to me, I had one more scene thing I wanted to bring up. Go ahead. Uh, that, that, go that no one has mentioned that when he comes home at the final scene that, that, uh, Jed is in his, in a robe. Like, what did he take a shower? Or, <laughs> She's at, comforting at him. Like he was in it. Like, is that her robe? Like, I didn't know if he was holding her hostage. I at think that point. he came to the house in a robe because he was all beat up still. Right. I think Which, that was, she shouldn't have let him in the house. Who yeah, let her do that that beat the hell in a she, robe in their house? <laughs> that she believed this stalker stranger who comes to your house in a robe with presumably nothing underneath. I just, and then they are sitting on the couch together. I just thought that was a little odd for the storyline. Okay. Ryan, overall grade. Um, excuse me. I would also give it a B. Um, like I'm defending this movie a lot just cause like, I don't, I don't think it's that bad. Like, I don't think it's like incredible, but I, I, I do think there are some good performances and some really good shots. Um, the guy who directed this has directed a bunch of uh, small English movies. He directed Notting Hill, which is the only other movie of his I've seen. And that's a really charming movie. This dude's like an English ass director and this feels like an English ass movie. Um, I, yeah, I'd give it a B. Like I, I enjoyed it a lot. Cool. Cookie. Um, probably give it like a, a C minus. Like I'm uh, definitely being gracious. Give it a C minus just because of uh, like cinematography. The plot didn't really hold for me. Um, I thought that it could have been a lot more entertaining, a lot more put together, and gave you that PTS feel. I feel like they could have done something with that and actually really dove deep into that, and they didn't touch it as enough. Okay, uh, Ken, I'll give it a C, C minus. I, you know, as much as I was making fun of Paul uh, uh, earlier about this movie, <laughs> which believe me, Paul, I like you. That's why I was busting it's your balls. All good, but, man. Uh, <laughs> I just it just didn't resonate with me. I can see what Ryan's saying. I don't want to, but I don't know. It's just nothing. I would never in a million years have picked this movie to watch. Yeah, cool. and that's why I'm yeah. glad. I'm so glad that you picked this movie because yeah. it's something out of the normal. Well, that, that you don't that, normally. It's the, it's the whole point of this show, right? Yeah, I, yep. I love it. No, I. Yeah, Jackson, great. I love I making gonna, fun of stuff. First, I'm gonna say coming from the guy who picked Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm sorry all right i'm sorry uh no i uh i'll give it a b i uh I, I i'll give it a b but i'd rather watch this than some a's i've seen just because i've seen a lot of a's that are much like other a's and this one felt different to me so it was kind of a newer experience to watch something like this um i uh i do think that it makes you think um and would the average Joe probably like this? I probably not. That's probably why none of us, except for Paul, ever heard of it. And nobody I've asked if they've seen it uh, in my personal life has ever heard of this. So uh, I'm ready, ready to read the book. It's based off a book. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Oh, it really? Is I shouldn't have to read the book to like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This all the, uh, lore, you, all the lore of the enduring love. As, as depressing as this is, Ken, Dune is still our our <laughs> lowest rated movie on this show. I would. I yeah, would I'm, say. I'm going with. Uh, I'm going to go with a C minus as well. Um, yeah, I'm just going like to that. Everything everything else has been was. said. Uh, real quick, up in the, up in the chat here, uh, uh, Solo Wookie says the clip in the credits is the best scene for me. It's the exclamation point of the movie. Cool. Yeah, a couple that's people. A, that's a really that. nice scene. Uh, when they're well, doing a picnic. Comic Man Andy is fingers crossing for a better movie next. week. <laughs> okay. Oh snap! All right, wait. You re uh, you read fine. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So, um, unless anybody has any uh, final thoughts, I think we've kind of talked this talked this uh, movie to death. Um, what are we gonna? How are we gonna choose the next uh, movie, well, Jackson? So uh, we have sports versus epics. Uh, next week we'll have at least one more genre, depending on how many episodes we get in the month. Or next next month we'll have at least one more genre. But um, so ourselves and uh, the the crew in the audience here have have picked a random selection of sports movies and epics. So here's our wheel. Uh, I'm going to spin this, and whatever it Dude, lands on is what we're watching. So, are you all ready? Air yeah, butt. Click, click Air the butt. shuffle button a few times. Oh, the random button? The no, shuffle? no, the sh shuffle right above. Shuffle. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. One, one or two. Yeah, yes. I don't think there's a bad movie on this list. All right, no, you ready not. for this? Air Let's do bud. it. Air bud. I know. I'm a little. I'm actually kind of uh, excited about Air Bud. <laughs> for real? <laughs> I've watched that since I was a kid. It's been so long. Thank you. <gasps> Rollerball. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> so, okay. 1975, baby! Oh, no. Roll, roll, we oh, will no. be Guys. watching James Kahn in Rollerball. Guys, I think and this is a bad movie. That will be on 
Uh, <sighs> Bored and Annoyed's channel next week. Next Saturday. I'm cool. sorry. Um, I think I'm getting six. I might be missing this one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, who wants to look at hey, hey, anything? Before you make that, you know, horrible comment there. I no, mean, it's how a great movie. You, how can you how can you not want to uh to watch this this wonderful I mean just look at this uh look at this poster here. It's a uh hang on a second. It's a cult it's a, classic. It's, I, I remember seeing it back in the day. I remember it not being horrible. I, a, I mean I remember it gives me PTSD. That's awesome. So so I, I, I have Smash. I've never seen it. That's I've cool. never seen it either. The whole okay. thing. I've seen bits and pieces oh, yeah. of it, but I know it, it doesn't have a stellar reputation as a good movie, but it'll be a fun movie to watch. Yeah. So. Okay. So I've been watching since Do I was mean, like 10. So yeah, I'm simple. Have we looked to it see if it's 10. even available though? No, oh, hey, uh, Ryan, we are watching this because Bake the Snake, he just uh thanks for coming, by the way, Bake. Uh not the one with LL Cool J, Rebecca Romaine, and Chris <laughs> No. <Martin>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See when you got like, Amazon Prime for when you guys picked Rollerball, that's what I thought of, and then I heard um, Ken say that the older version was like, okay, good, all right, because the cool. remake's yeah. not not good. No, it's terrible. No. Yeah, so that's why I was a little bummed on this one. Okay, uh, good. guys, it might be free on YouTube. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> Hell yeah, nice. <laughs> so uh, we have um, Ryan to thank for that. So awesome pick, Ryan. All right, cool. Uh, we are going to go around the horn right now to uh, just say our last uh, last pieces before we head out. Uh, we'll start. Uh, let's start with Cookie today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you for letting me come on the show again. Um, you guys can find me on just little podcasts, kind of everywhere on social media. You can also find my YouTube on anywhere you go and download YouTube, or uh, I'm all over the place. Download any type of podcast: iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, the whole nine yards. So, thanks, guys. Awesome, cool, Ryan. Are we back? Okay, yep. hey guys, Ryan Leopolis here. That's my last name. Uh, I said it before. Uh, Fake Nerd Podcast every Sunday. Um, we have a new episode. Uh, we're going to be reviewing what movie comes out this week. Mulan. We are reviewing Mulan. We're actually reviewing Mulan. Yeah. You should watch our. You should listen to our episode. We're definitely watching that movie that's coming out soon. Um, on our YouTube channel, we have a Final Fantasy demo remake. We have a new Mortal Kombat playthrough we're going through because uh, that movie's coming out in January. Very excited about that. Uh, just type in Fake Nerd Podcast. Uh, we're everywhere. I personally am DJ Tony Snark everywhere. Uh, I've been streaming a lot because I don't got a job anymore. So if you want to watch me play a bunch of video games, just hit me up on DJ Tony Snark. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> oh, Paul, man. Hey, uh, thanks for enduring this movie for me. Uh, appreciate Whoa. it. <laughs> uh, I'm Paul with a, a podcast, Tales from the Flip Side, with the CBSI brand. Check us out. Monday nights, uh, about 9.30, we go live and just kind of shoot the breeze uh, about what we picked up in, a com in the comic collecting world recently and go from there. So hope to see you in the chat. Awesome. Cool. Ken. Hey, I'm Ken from Pinkies Out Podcast. You can find us on all the podcasting platforms and a little bit on YouTube. I'm trying to get the other guys to do some more with me on YouTube, but we'll see what happens. So, Awesome. Cool. My co-host. Had to blow out that vape head. Sorry. Uh, I am Jackson with Bored and Annoyed. And speaking of Bored and Annoyed, hop over to our YouTube channel uh, right after this. In about a half hour, we will be talking about this puppy here. So um, this, uh, spoilers, is incredible. Yes. Um, and, yeah, so do that. But also subscribe to us over there. Um, and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Spotify, Google, iTunes, all that. Or is it is it even iTunes anymore? It's Apple Podcasts now, right? But, but yeah, Fancy. make sure you check us out. Cool. Yeah, and uh, last but not least, I am Michael Carls from the Downright Nerdy Podcast. Uh, thank you guys all again for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, make sure you guys hit that notification bell for uh, our channel and for Board and Noise channel. And actually, for everybody else that's here on the panel so you know when all of our awesome stuff is coming out. And uh, please, everybody out there, be safe and uh, um, just, just take wash care. Wash your hands. Of, yeah, wash your hands. Take care of your loved ones. And, uh, yeah, um, unless anybody else has anything, anything else to say. Uh, Paul, I agree I'm with Comic Man Andy. I'm looking to the Final Fantasy VII remake. I'm, uh, I've never played Final Fantasy. I'm. Uh, thank you, Paul, for picking such a wonderful offbeat movie, and I hope you have more of them lined up. Actually, you, yeah, that's the whole point of this, right? It's so thank you. You know, good, bad, whatever, middle. It's all good. So, Cookie, right. there's a demo for the Final Fantasy VII remake. Go play it. It's free. All right. <laughs> we'll oh, talk after. <laughs>